I'm Ian Williams. I'm speaking with Tolu Alarantoba, author of The Junta of Happenstance, published by Palimpsest and Struther, and one of the three Canadian finalists for this year's Griffin Poetry Prize. Hi, Tolu. Hi, Ian. Thanks for speaking with me. In a few sentences, how would you describe your collection? It's a rambling, I would say it's a rambling journey through uh, an internal landscape. You know, it, it grapples with uh, history, memory, um, and a lot of un unanswered questions about uh, the, the nature of, of, of reality, the nature of conflict, the nature of uh, interpersonal difficulties, uh, family dysfunction, uh, colonial violences, um, and, and, and so forth. And, and of course, migration, which, which, was, my, um, uh, which was the experience around uh, the writing of that book over the three years that I uh, that I wrote most of the poems that are in it. Mm. It's funny, whenever you describe the book, it changes a little bit. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea what I'm going to say next again. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, cool. it's so hard to pin poetry down, it, right? It is, it is. Like describing a novel. Yeah, it's like, well, if you ask me what, what the book's about, honestly, Ian, um, I'm, I'm just guessing at what's in there. I have no clue. It's just my best guess. <laughs> it's always beyond us, right? That's a great yes. thing, I think. But yeah. It's always out of reach. Yeah. So I can just try, uh, you know, to, to say what it feels like, but I might not necessarily have a statement ready always. Right, the experience of being in it there. So I get the sense reading it that you're this poet who wanders around the world. You spoke about immigration a second ago. Wanders around and observes um, and brings that back to us, right? So are you a poet of experience and observation? I, I would say yes, observation is very key to, uh, to, to, to what I do, especially you know, because I'm able to sense some of the incongruencies of, of life or some of the unusual uh, themes and patterns. Uh, and they just really impress themselves upon me. And, and you know, uh, I, I feel a need to tell someone. <laughs> I feel a need to, to you know, to, to document some of that. I feel a need to document some of the things that do not quite make sense to me, mm -hmm. uh, and some of the things that I, that I find wondrous. Um, it has also been a way to observe my own landscape, my my own past, and see if I can understand why I am the way I am. You know, um, and so yes, observation is is very it is the key to um, to my practice. And what part do readers play in your writing practice? At what point do we exist for you? <laughs> um, <laughs> what was that laugh? <laughs> I, I mean, my, my answer to that question it has to be narcissistic, right? Because readers do exist, but, but they begin to exist later in the process for, for me. Um, th there is a disembodied reader in my head, uh, you know, that inner critic that is, um, uh, that, 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 wants me to, to write the best version of, of what I have to say. Uh, so, so that internal voice is a reader of sorts. I, I, and I bring that voice with me when I'm editing. Uh, but the actual reader, I'm not necessarily writing to impress the reader. I'm not necessarily trying to, uh, I have no agenda for the reader. Um, what I feel is if I have been faithful to my vision and if a lot of human experiences um, um, universal, um, it will do its work and it will find it. So readers, uh, our readers exist much later in the process for me when I'm getting the work ready for uh, submission, um, you know, uh, and um, of, of recent, you know, having to talk about my work. It's a new experience for me. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah. Oh, oh, it does. It does. Uh, I'll ask it a little bit differently then. What about community for you? Uh, so beyond readership, how do you think about yourself within uh, a community of writers, yourself as a reader? Uh, the community is, uh, is my life. Um, I, I attended the public library MFA, as I say in, in the notes of the book. Um, I, so I, I didn't necessarily go to any institution to learn how to write. So I, I learned how to write by, you know, initially emulating the, the poets that I, that I, that I love. Um, and, and the poets that I, I'm in community with continue to, to, to add to me. Um, and so, you know, yeah, we write poems after other poets, uh, you know, that th they're poets that, you know, give me prompts, uh, that they're poets that show me what is possible. And they're poets that are just my friends and we meet up for coffee and so forth. Uh, and I 
feel that because poetry is so insular and people that have the um, poetic vision are so few, I don't know if that sounds pretentious, um, it is very comforting to see. Mm, your tribe and family in, in poetry. Yeah. You did go to an institution though to uh, practice medicine and to become a doctor. Yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts on why doctors make such good writers? Or uh, what's the connection between medicine and literature, you think? Well, I mean, I was institutionalized, uh, you know, in the medical citadel <laughs> for six years. Um, I, I think it's the, um, there's a lot of the training that, um, that is very um, useful uh, for a writing practice. You know, we're trained to see, uh, we're trained to describe accurately what we are seeing. Uh, we're trained to develop empathy, uh, you know, for the patients. Uh, and, you know, we see, people in a variety of you know, distressing conditions and we try to reach them you know, wherever they are. Um, uh, we're very intimate with, 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 with death. We, we come to terms with um, our own uh, temporality. You know? um, and, and I think all that you know, impresses very strongly on, on, on people who are uh, paying attention. Um, and, and of course, I have to mention, you know, the language as well. And so, you know, we, we learn a lot of, you know, biological names, uh, but, but, but the way we uh, construct diagnoses and, and so forth um, requires a familiarity with some Latin. Uh, and so for those that write in English, uh, it, it helps us deconstruct the way words work. Uh, and so that, that was very useful for, for me. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of death there, the judges said, uh, these poems go beyond the desire to ward off death. They emerge out of a life intimate with death's randomness. And so if not death, what are you most afraid of as a poet? I do have to say I'm afraid of death. Uh, I have come to terms with it. Uh, but, but, but beyond death, I, I feel a, a kind of um, an inability Yeah, that's a good one. Let me think about it. Um, loneliness, I think, is worse than death. <laughs> uh, and a kind of ideological loneliness or, or, or kind of uh, uh, um, lone, conceptual loneliness in which our perspectives are not received, understood, or validated. I, I feel it's incredibly hard to live with. And I think poetry is a part of uh, trying to bridge that gap in which we're saying, um, here I am, uh, here's my perspective. Uh, this is something that I feel is representative of me. And sometimes a reader receives that and, and, and that's very gratifying. Uh, the converse is that um, we are um, hurtling alone and cold in space, uh, you know, without any connection uh, to, to another or others. Um, and, and I feel, yeah, that's, that's, that's worse than, non-existence, you know, or death, as the case may be. Oh. Do you share with us a few lines, Tolu? Sure. Can I read a different one? <laughs> you can read whatever you wish. <laughs> I'm going to read a part of the poem called Incursus because it has the word griffin in it. I'll read the first stanza. <laughs> Happening on the fence of Eden, night resolves into griffin guards we had not seen. Mat against the confluence beyond, iron shavings of pupils shoved apart by what light there is. Toil, toil, toil they chant with the night in Angelus, lance butts on the mulch. Thank you, Tolu. Thank I've you been so speaking, much. I've been speaking with Tolu Alarantova. Thank you, Tolu. I've been speaking with Tolu Alarantova author of The Hunt of Happenstance, a Canadian finalist for the 2022 Griffin Poetry Prize.